What's up guys, Gator with self.dev. We are back doing another resume review video for you and portfolio review. So, first one up is Kennedy Web Design. We're gonna reload this in a new tab because he's got a really cool little loading animation here. So first impressions, the design is really good on this one. Better than my portfolio for sure. I like the little circle SVG animation and the button hover effects. Those are really cool. I do think you should probably take off the works that don't have live links or like GitHub links. Also for these that do have live links, if you can link those up in your GitHub, that'd be pretty cool too. Just so they, they can see the code and make sure that you actually coded these. But these that don't have a demo link don't really contribute very much. Like it's a picture of it, that's cool. But how do I know this is an actual site and not just something you grabbed off the internet? You either need to have that like a GitHub link or a link to the live site. Plus you, you do already have like I think five, four or five with live site links. So if you just take off the ones that don't have the live site links, you'd be good. And then that little slide animation is cool if you built that yourself, that's awesome. Something else that's kind of interesting is that these pop up no matter what way you're going, down or up. I don't know, that's kind of weird to me. Um, GitHub, let's see. I would probably change this link to your like not just the portfolio link, I'd probably change it to your root GitHub portfolio, just so they can see more than just your 2020 portfolio, they can see all your projects. Also, looks like you were building a lot of stuff here and then you kind of stopped building as much. Uh, I don't know why that happened, but wanna keep getting those green squares going, so keep building stuff. And that, I mean, make sure you're still working on this and still trying to improve. Because it kind of looks like you were super into coding and then you kind of got uninterested in it. So make sure you keep building stuff. Ooh, that one's pretty cool. How it draws the line around there. I like that. And then it's gonna be awesome after you get your blog going too. And then I do like how you have your email on these too. Uh, Cause when I click on this, I don't have any default email signed into yet. So if a site only has that option, I usually just don't ever email. You've gotta be able to get the email too. So I like that you have the ability to just like copy and paste the email right there if they need it. And then it's responsive. So that's good too. You do need to add a fav, fav icon, so probably just make the K black and stick that up there. You also need a link to your resume, assuming you have a resume. If not, build the resume. And I think that's about it for this one. So overall, pretty good portfolio, man. The design's way better than mine, I like it. And these sites look pretty cool as well. They've got like basically the same animations you've got on your 2020 portfolio, but they look good too. I would probably add a few, I'd probably build a few JavaScript specific projects, like maybe like a to-do list, or if you go to self-taught-dev.com, I've got a few practice projects like the memory game or this JavaScript clock, or the Pokedex where you're pulling in stuff from an API, or the same thing with the weather app, you're pulling in stuff from an API on that as well. Um, something to show off a little bit more of the JavaScript side because that'll help a lot. And because I think you said in your email you were having a little trouble getting interviews. So having some cool JavaScript projects probably helped that a lot. And then having your resume linked up on here somewhere as well. And then I'd probably link up your, put your number somewhere as well. I know it's in the footer, but I'd probably put it in this little contact section as well. So they can call you because that's how most people are gonna try to get you in for an interview. They can be like, hey, phone call. And if they don't have the number, it's gonna be kind of hard to do that. All right, so next one up here, resume. Please excuse my crude redacting in Photoshop, but didn't wanna give out, I wanna make an attempt to remove personal information. So looking to join as a Java software developer, having well versed with, having well versed with Java concepts focused on solving customer problems, improving usability and maximizing efficiency, willing to learn and adapt to latest technologies as per the applications. Application shouldn't be capitalized. As per the application's requirement, looking to utilize skills and enthusiasm about working with multicultural teams to play an important role in organization success. I feel like there's some grammatical stuff in there. I'm not sure what it is because I'm not, like I said, I'm not great at the grammatical stuff, but check that out. Um, I don't think you need your address on there. I know there's like, if you're in a bad location, they can discriminate based off that. Cause like if they see your address, they're like, oh, he lives over there. and eh, he's probably not the best candidate. We don't want him for the job. So I'd probably take your address off unless that's like a super common thing where you live. I'm not 
sure, I don't know a lot about resume, overseas resumes. I just know like what they'd be looking for in the States. Plus, if you're trying to get like a remote job in the States, that would hinder you a lot. Because you can explain that when you're in the interview, if it's like a call or something. But if they see that and they don't even give you a call, you can't really do anything about it. Um, also, the resume is super long, and you, I don't think you, I didn't see any work experience. You've got the project section, you've got skills, you've got accomplishments, software, certs, personal hobbies, strengths, declaration. So we don't need it to be four pages if we don't have any work experience. You can have multiple page resumes if you've got like five, 10, 20 years of work experience and you're going for like a more senior role, then you will probably need more pages to explain like your certifications and why you are qualified for this role. But if you don't even have any work experience yet, we wanna keep the page short because you're, you're gonna be going for entry level jobs, you're gonna be competing against a lot of people and the hiring managers are gonna be scanning hundreds of resumes a day. So you just wanna have one page where they can get the high points as fast as possible. They don't, they're not gonna flip through four pages. Also not a fan of the like the scale thing here for skills because you kind of want to let them assess where you're at. Uh, you're, if you're gonna do a scale thing, you should mark yourself high on everything like you did. But when they call you in for the interview, you need to like knock it out of the park and have all of the stuff down. Also critical reasoning, eh, that's not like, I wouldn't put that on your resume, quick learning, like that's some, those are just like buzzwords. Those, you can't really prove that you know that. Everybody is gonna say that they're a quick learner and that they're good at critical thinking and have good communication skills. Okay, maybe not everybody's gonna say they have good communication skills. I have really crap communication skills, but still, some of those are just like general buzzwords that you don't really need on your skills section. But you could break these out into like a multi-column layout and that would reduce a lot of space. Patience. Or Java. So you've got that in your software skills too. So like, why is that there twice? I'd probably just get rid of that skills section and just have your software section. Cause like MySQL database, is that in here as well? Why isn't MySQL in your, okay, yeah, there it is. So yeah, you've got that on there twice. So that's kind of redundant. I'd probably just get rid of the skills. And then projects. Your projects sound freaking awesome. The thing is, it takes up so much room. We want to try to shorten that a little bit because the, like just the projects alone take up like a full page and we want to get it on one page, maybe two. We want to shoot for one. Account shouldn't be capitalized there. User shouldn't be capitalized there. Project shouldn't be capitalized there. Database, I don't think that should be capitalized there. Programs shouldn't be capitalized there. Yeah, you've got a lot of capitalization things or maybe I'm just really bad at grammar and those are supposed to be capitalized, I don't know. All right, so uh, the third page here, accomplishments, participated, da, 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 Texas, participated, and secured fourth rank at da, 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 volunteered. So that's cool, accomplishments are good. Personal, I'd probably take out the personal section. You could probably get rid of hobbies because that's gonna help us get this down to one or two pages. Strengths, so you have like strengths, software, and then skills. Those are kind of all three the very like very similar things. I'd probably get rid of strengths as well because you've got another redundant stuff here like quick learner. Quick learner, that's one of your skills as well. So you don't really need that on there twice. Probably get rid of hobbies, strengths, declaration, uh, I kinda like that. But if you need to remove it to get more space on your resume, you can leave that. I mean, you can take it off. Is 68% within the top, is that like super high near the top? Because 68% to me seems low based on like stuff in the states if that's low or medium i probably wouldn't put that on there um, and then as long as you're G same thing with the gpa as long as that's up near the top of the possible gpas keep that on there if it's near like the middle or low i probably wouldn't put that on there don't advertise what's not good or what don't advertise what's not great uh education looks pretty good but yeah so just figure out how to make the projects a little bit smaller um with the projects on your resume you're trying to go in you're trying to say hey this is what I built, this is what I worked with on them. And then when they call you in for an interview, that's when you'd go into more detail on the projects. But I like the style, I like the layout. We just need to work on getting it shorter and then make a few other edits to it. And then also, if you have a portfolio or GitHub or anything like that, link that up on here. 
Yeah, as a Java Java software developer, you should probably you should have a few things on GitHub showing at least for some of the projects you made. So get that on there. All right, so next one here, you said you were having some trouble landing a job as a data scientist. You've learned most of what you know about backend programming and Django and books about Django. So you wanna do backend Python stuff is what I'm getting out of what your email said. So let's see here, PhD in economics. Um, that's awesome. Thesis was game theory. It's really cool. I like that you have your link, your um, GitHub linked up there. And you got your phone numbers, email, you had your address on there. Uh, I would probably take that off. That's just me, up to you. Um, what did your GitHub look like? So this is what your GitHub looked like. It's kind of empty. There's only three squares here. They're over a wide span of time. Doesn't look like you've done anything recently. So if you're still building stuff, make sure that's uploaded because like some people don't really care about your GitHub. To me, it's like, hey, are you building cool stuff and are you still working on it or did you just get into code for a little bit and now you're you think you're done learning and you're just like all right I'm just gonna apply now and try to get a job and it's been months since you built anything so I would keep building stuff keep uploading it here and you don't really have any kind of like projects or anything linked up on your resume the formats a little off because Photoshop just decided to make it that way especially this one this one looks all stretched and weird I don't know why Photoshop did that I'd probably take off the web development part and put front-end development, back-end development, because it looks kind of, the format is kind of weird on that. Also the same thing, like not the same thing, but like the format on the parts with the dashes looks kind of weird too to me. I would move the dashes back or take those off and just have like an indentation here. Because on the PDF version you sent me, the spacing just looks kind of weird with those. And then you talked about Django in the email, but you don't have Django listed as a skill here, so I would list that as a skill for sure. Something else I noticed, you have March 2018 to, are you still working there? Put current, and the same thing with January 2014 to blank, and then 2019 to, to win. Or if you left, put the end date like you did for these. I also am not, I don't understand why these are indented, or these, so you worked at the Ministry of Culture and Tourism here, and then are these like Turkey Tourism Promotion and Developed Agency Office? These are different promotions you got, because the that looks like a location. To me, these look more like locations, and if those are promotions, it's not super clear to me that that was like a promotion or like you moved to a different role within the same company, because it looks like your title stayed the same, like Computer Liaison, Computer Liaison, and then on um, there it changed, civil servant and computer liaison. So I'm just kind of confused in what that, what's going on with that. So if you try to clear that up a little bit, um, and then when you're using, I'd probably add like a skills part for each job. So like here you were using data science with Python, um, maybe just bold the words, like applied data science, bold Python, bold pandas. Is pan should pandas be capitalized? because it's a Python library, I don't know. Um, and then like bold R right there. Bold the important words, because when they first skim over your resume, they're just, you get like 25 seconds of time while they skim over it, and then they decide whether they wanna dig more into your resume or not. Another thing, these don't seem to be organized in any any particular, any like organize these in chronological order, because you've got like 2000, 2003, 2017 to 2018, 2020, 2020, and then here it's Jan 2014 to April 2017, 2017 to 2019, 2014 to 2018 to, so organize those in chronological order or reverse chronological order. I'd put the most recent one first. That's just me. There doesn't seem to be any kind of order those. Also the Python jobs, it looks like most of what you were doing was just answering questions. So that doesn't particularly qualify you to be like a back-end engineer. You basically need some projects you can point to and say, hey, look, I can do this stuff. And the computer liaison where got questionnaire data and evaluated it in R, that's, that's good. You need more stuff like that versus just answered questions. Or if you can build some cool stuff on your own, like build something that analyzes the data about the plague that's going on right now. I gotta be careful with my words because YouTube will censor this video or de-rank it if I say specific stuff. It's crazy what they do nowadays. But you just need more proof that you know what you're doing to me. But hope that helps, man.
All right, last one here. So I like that you got your GitHub and LinkedIn linked up. That's awesome. You got your phone number. You got like the general area you live in, like the city and the state. So as long as you're trying to get a job there, that's fine. Um, and then you got your email address. So summary, ambitious, energetic, computer science student, skilled in communication, programming logic, and cross-platform coding, have been working on personal projects and seek to work on plenty more in the future. It's not bad. Um, I was looking on your GitHub. You only have one project on there or one repository from what I saw, a data visualization project. So I'm kind of wondering why aren't these linked up there, like LED Music Cube, Predict Future Data Using AI or Innkeeper. Um, why aren't those on your GitHub? That'd be kind of cool to see, especially the Predicting Future Data Using AI. Because otherwise it's like, did he build these or is he just saying he built these? Well, the Music Cube, you might not be able to put on GitHub, but like the Innkeeper and the Predicting Future Data Using AI, there should be some code for that, put that on GitHub. In the Innkeeper one, I'd probably put what languages you used, like what you built that with. Like on the Predicting Future one, you've got using Excel and Python. I probably mentioned what library you used because I'm assuming you use some ache, some kind of AI library in Python, and then probably bold or italicize the important important words like Raspberry Pi, Python, Excel. Um, there aren't any keywords in this really, but italicize or bold, do something to make the keywords stand out. And then something else I noticed on your LinkedIn, you've only got two connections, so just like connect with varying people on there that you know from college. Just like if there's people in your class that you see on LinkedIn, just be like connect, 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 connect. Because your network on LinkedIn helps recruiters find you. Not that the recruiters are very helpful in the first place, but maybe like 1% or 2% are helpful. A lot of them are just spam and they're like, hey, we've got this super cool .NET job for you. And you're like, do I have .NET on my resume anywhere or my portfolio? They're just spamming out stuff. But hope this helps you guys out. Uh, if you want me to review your resume, I can't promise I'll do it. A lot of the resumes I get are already pretty great, so I don't really have too much feedback for you on them. Most of it's just general stuff, like keeping your styles consistent with like the dates. Speaking of the dates, why aren't these organized? This is June 2020, that should be at the top. And then this one in the middle, and then this one last, because to me this is March 2015, so why aren't these organized by date? Are they organized by like how important you think they are? because that would make sense. This one doesn't seem very important. There's not any keywords in it, but still I would probably add keywords to this and then organize those chronologically. But yeah, if you email me your resume and I don't get to it, I apologize. Like I said, there's a lot of emails I get that are already really good. Now I don't have any feedback on them. Uh, and then I don't have a lot of time to just sit there and go through every resume. Unfortunately, I wish I could. I wish I could help all of you, but time is the only non-renewable resource we have. So. Hope this helps you out. Give me a thumbs up if you think I'm putting out good content so YouTube knows I'm doing good stuff. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all of the latest content I put out. If you want my resume template, the one I was using before I got my first developer job, look in the description. I'll have a way for you to get that. And also make sure you check out selftaught-dev.com if you need practice projects. Most of them are specifically for front-end developers like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, that kind of stuff but planning on adding more eventually. I think that's about it. So I will see you guys next time. Peace. Round one.